Uh, today we're going to be talking about building business continuity uh, via hybrid workspaces. So just to give you a little bit of um, housekeeping just before we start, um, today's uh, webinar is going to be recorded, so you'll see that. And we will uh, be asking questions. You do have the opportunity to raise questions through the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. And we will also have opportunity for people to be uh, uh, brought into the conversation and ask questions of our, our panelists. So going on to that, and just to introduce our panelists today, um, we're really pleased to be able to uh, bring to you three uh, really great panelists to talk about this discussion and this subject today. First, I'd like to introduce Mark Lidden. He's a director of Turner and Townsend and has recently become the Midlands Regional Infrastructure Lead for their UK business. Mark manages a team of over 140 consultants across commercial management, project management and project controls disciplines and supports clients such as uh, HS2, Seven Trent Water, Highways England, Network Rail and Environment Agency with their asset management uh, portfolios. So uh, welcome to you, Mark. Secondly, today we've got uh, Collins Daniel. Collins is the uh, head of Workplace Technology Office for, for L&T Infotech. Leading, he leads conversations for workplace transformation. Now, Collins is actually coming into us from Chennai today and uh, he has a very busy schedule and he will He's with us now, but unfortunately, we will have to, to uh, leave the uh, webinar around about half past 12. So if he does leave or you see him disappear, it's not because he's um, we've lost him or he's given up. He's got another very important meeting. So uh, thanks very much indeed for coming in to, today, Collins. Thank you, Paul. And finally, we have Jason Kemsley. Jason is a director with Uptimes Solutions and Uptime Solutions help IT companies around the world deliver their day-to-day -day support services. And we're really interested to hear how Jason's sort of experience with that, with his business is um, changing and is as, uh, developing with the, uh, with the introduction and more use of hybrid uh, workplace. So welcome to you as well, James. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So, um, in an introduction to this uh, this session today, if we if we look back, we did a, we did actually do a session about a year ago talking about how organisations need to adapt to work remotely as a result of the uh, the pandemic and the uh, lockdown restrictions that were in place around the world, and really to look at con you know and considering the future of the potential of hybrid working of a, of a hybrid working model. I suppose now, you know, a year on, um, the reality of that is really upon us. And uh, as, as businesses have got used to adapting to uh, hybrid working and now are starting to sort of consider how they return to what would be, you know, considered a normal business. Um, you know, we need to really look at what decisions that organisations now need to take and are making on, on the back of this, uh, this uh, pandemic as they re-establish their business operations in a, in a more sort of normal environment. So today we wanna to sort of look at what actually has happened rather than what may happen. And, you know, actually take forward some ideas, some thoughts and some uh, good opportunity to sort of review what people are doing around, you know, how they're managing recruitment, uh, retention of staff, and essentially getting business and, uh, up and running sustainable as quickly as possible. Now, before we start with the first question, um, through, throughout this session, we will, uh, we've got a couple of polls that we'd like to sort of uh, get you more engaged with. And just to sort of kick that off, the first poll uh, question will come up and we will just get your views on those questions, please. So the first question is really about what your uh, preferred um, pattern of work is um, uh, at the moment. I'll give you a few seconds to actually uh, respond to that and then we'll see what uh, your responses and your, your, cur your current answers are. So. If we can have the results for that, that's very good. Um, here are the results. I think they're up on the screen. 
Um, so we've got the answers. It's actually um, a very unanimous response that uh, people are working hybridly or in a hybrid fashion. Um, a few are returning to the workplace on a full-time basis. I'm sure there'll be needs for that in certain circumstances. Um, interestingly, no one sort of replied that they, they look, they are or are looking to work from home full-time. So with that in mind, um, the first question I wanted to ask our panel um, is about the decision makers, actually. Um, a year ago, it was the IT department that was being tasked with making organisations flexible and the, you know, give them the ability to work from home and be hybrid. Um, but now, uh, now that we're back into a more normal sort of working environment, is that still the case? Is it, is it actually the IT departments that are driving the decisions or is it more um, sort of taken from other parts of the organization? So firstly, I'd like to go to Collins um, and just get your view on that, please. Sure, Paul. Thank you. And, you know, interesting uh, poll there and very overwhelming, I would say, to go to hybrid. Uh, so hello, everybody. And thank you, uh, Simplex, for this opportunity. Uh, so on, on that question, it's it's more on, you know, who we are talking to as, uh, you know, the IT team and the procurement, but the decision makers behind them are, the, are definitely the businesses, right? So you have human resources, recruitment, all of them pitching in to contribute to that decision. And, uh, you know, just going back and you did touch upon that is, you know, one year back, people were just scrambling to, you know, uh, on a dime, start working from home. And I think it was pretty successful, you know, devices were shipped, VDIs were provisioned, you know, Zoom and Teams were kind of, you know, went through the roof. Uh, and But over a period of time, you know, what changed, right? I mean, was it only technology that was needed? And I think that's something that is comes through in the conversations that we're having, right? You know. So what is the user experience? Are they really, you know, having the best user experience, you know, conversations such as, you know, I, I want ease of use, uh, you know, what's their well-being like today, right? And how does technology support that? Uh, how do I, you know, enable their growth? And how do I enable them, you know, from moving from one role to another or be, you know, uh, you know, compatible with other roles so that, you know, you can have movement of roles within, within the organization. So those are the conversations that we're having and then, Technology is just an afterthought, as in, you know, how does technology support uh, those objectives? I think uh, that's where we're going with. And yes, as far as decision makers out there, IT is we're still talking to them, but then behind them, you have businesses and, you know, departments like HR and recruitment that come into play. Paul. Excellent. OK, so, yeah, very much the case there. And I mean, I suppose, uh, Jason, you obviously see some of this as well with the organizations you're working with. Uh, how are you seeing that changing and who are the sort of people you're talking to about? Um, uh, sort of the, the, the future of, of this sort of hybrid working model? So we, um, we, we're very fortunate. We work with sort of everyone from, from the 10 man organization up to the 3000, if you like. Um, IT was once a facilitator. It facilitated people being able to perform a role. It's very quickly shifted into being an enabler, right? And deciding uh, how people do a role and how to effectively do it in a better manner. Um, what we've seen is is we've seen that shift straight upwards to the board, to the director level, um, and then actually the instructions funneling down to IT. This is what we want to do, make it happen. Uh, and the main reason for that is if we look at Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Google, the deployments or the, the decision to make something we're going to work from home forever. We're going to be hybrid forever. Have actually been used uh, across departments, as Collins was saying. So, from a marketing aspect, what better marketing have you got than announcing that you're going to offer a better working environment for your staff? In from a sales perspective, you can definitely put some good PR on your organisation. From a strategic sp perspective, you can save some cost on some uh, some office space, etc. So, what we're actually seeing a lot of at the moment is almost instructions or, or business-based strategic decisions from the board being passed down to IT, right now you've got to go make this happen. Um, so we've actually seen whilst IT has been empowered as a, you know, a concept and a, a department, actually now, unfortunately, they've lost a little bit of the ownership of the direction they've got ahead um, and they're being given their roadmap and then how they make that happen is completely up to them. So it, there's positives and negatives to it. But definitely it's been moved up the ladder to the board. Uh, and unfortunately, some of that 
where we're heading and the direction we want to take has been removed from a lot of the IT departments that we get to speak with. Okay, that's quite interesting, isn't it? I wonder if that's something that will um, pervade in, in such. I mean, you know, I think IT generally has sort of built its its sort of reputation on being able to, as you say, enable the organisation. And there are certain key roles, you know, le you know, leadership in IT and things like that, which uh, a lot of lot of discussion about, you know, how influential how influential they should be um, in in the board, if you like. Um, Maybe organisations have had to take those decisions, um, and uh, you know, CIOs, directors of IT, and that, you know, will I think um, in you know time come back in and be more you know able to influence what that that, that technology um, sort of solution and sort of direction really you know will will take as a result of decisions that the, the, the companies and organisations are taking. Absolutely. Spot on. Spot on, Paul. And, yeah. and hopefully the power eventually gets back to the IT department one day. At the moment, there's too many uh, sales tactics and marketing and HR uh, obviously get involved. And, and what better way to recruit talent than to be able to work from anywhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. 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 And Mark, Mark how, how, does that sort of, um, how does that sort of relate to, to what you're seeing and how you're working with your customers? Um, is it the similar sort of picture? Yeah, that, thanks, Paul. I absolutely echo what Collins and, and Jason have said. Uh, absolutely resonates with, with me and what we're experiencing. Um, it, it, there is a lot of discussions going on at the moment in senior management around how we uh, adapt ourselves to, to, to the new world we, we, we're in. Um, we, we're clearly, uh, from, from our organization point of view, we, we, all we have is our people. We don't have a product as such, so we need to look, look after and listen to, to our colleagues and, and what they're looking for. And as per the poll, that they're looking for that hybrid solution as well they're looking for the best of both worlds where they have the flexibility they have time at home to concentrate and, and juggle home life but also they have time in the office or client space where they can interact um, and get the benefit of, of the, the real face time that, that I think a lot of us crave that, that we've missed over the, the time we've been uh, locked away so um, the, 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 there seems to be a consensus that the, the more time needs to be out of home than in the home uh, is, is where we're going to land uh, but whether that's uh, going to be hard and fast rules I don't think we'll get there I, th I think as as Jason mentioned that uh, office space is going to be reviewed and, and there's uh, a desire I think to, to capitalize and, and capture some of the savings that have been generated over the last time um, so how does that affect office space and, and what does that mean in terms of infrastructure um, and, and how do we adapt to that um, but I think the, the the opportunity I guess for, from an IT point of view is to how we evolve into a better way of working even still. Um, so what, what are the tools, the software, the, the hardware that can make it even more productive and more even more efficient in terms of what we do? Uh, I think particularly when we're gonna have colleagues in the office and, and some that are, are not. Um, so how do we conduct meetings in a sensible way and how do we make sure everyone's productive in those sessions? And we don't want people to feel isolated that they're the odd one out um, whilst they're at home and maybe the majority are in team meetings in, in the office and, and even vice versa. So I think there's still a lot to do from a, uh, an IT perspective where they can really help organizations uh, really fine tune their, their productivity and, and their, their efficiency in terms of way of working um, and, and to make everyone lives uh, better really I, th I think that's that's the really exciting um where we try and balance the best of both worlds and and uh we we, we really move forward in a, in a much better way yeah absolutely mark I, I absolutely agree with you and there's a couple of things there that i think are really important messages i think you know we need to realize that um you know something like a hybrid working model is not just about the opportunity to save a bit of money or you know sort of change the way that uh, you know we're just generally using um, technology we obviously have to change i think it also brings into organizations it brings up the uh, the agenda if you like on meetings things like exactly what you're talking about around you know how people um, you know the satisfaction of, of people's work environment you know well-being mental health and everything else it's something that we all know has been there but i think this 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 sort of period is really now bringing out, um, you know, those really important aspects that need, you know, we need to address and we need to make sure we uh, we manage well. Um, interestingly, as well as you say, uh, we we might just sort of pop up the second poll here because the second poll is also about 
how organizations are dealing with uh, collaboration and what sort of tools that we're using. So I wonder um, if we could just put that second poll up now um, and just see how, how the audience are responding to, you know, the tools and, 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 and uh, you know, opportunities for, for, in, for improving the collaboration. We have just a, a, an example. Other, other other brands and makes are available, but um, you know these are the things that you know people typically have been using um, sort of over the last uh, several months or so. Uh, I think it's interesting, Paul, how uh, people have kind of been driven to kind of the key names, the core names that are well known. But I think as as uh, the lockdown went on, people were looking at alternative smaller products and mm. trialing them, uh, and I think. That there's absolutely an acceptance to, to do things differently and, and open to, to new entrants into that world. Um, which is really exciting. Absolutely. And, and we've seen massive change in all of the suppliers, including the ones that are, that are on the screen now, you know, how they they focus their development of that product. If you think back to, you know, teams and things like that, when we started, you know, it was, it was a long way behind zoom in terms of its uh, ability to ease of use. And Microsoft have put a lot of development into Teams now, and you know it's become, you know, much more of the you know the standard um, tool for, for business business use. And, I'll, and I'll, I'm glad to say, as I was saying that, that the the, the poll actually shows that. Um, so um, you know that's interesting because I think you know Teams has that ability to to integrate into many you know other aspects of the Microsoft suite, which is obviously you know, probably predominant in, in organisation business sort of environments. And, um, you know, we're, we're using Zoom today, um, you know, for, um, I think, you know, there are horses for courses and, uh, you know, the way that we use the tools are, are important as well. So interestingly, not, we didn't get anyone um, actually responding to um, Slack or Google chat as a, as a collaboration tool. So something again, maybe to look at going forward. Um, but yeah, that's quite interesting. So if we if we look at that, um, uh, as 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 organisations realise that their their business model, you know, their business operation model needs to change to support hybrid working, what uh, again, Mark, maybe as you're you know sort of following on, what 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 do you think are the key decisions um, you're seeing organisations take around how they position any hybrid work hybrid working strategy and solution? Uh, I think for, for our type of organization, we're absolutely listening to, to the feedback from colleagues um, and understanding their needs and, and, and desires. And, and as you, I think we've touched on, um, welfare and, and mental health is a key part of that um, and, and feeling that sense of connectivity, um, but also keeping that flexibility and, and uh, being able to be in touch with, with home life and, and whatever that might mean for individuals, whether it's families or, or caring for, for others and, uh, or just the ability to, to do uh, exercise when they want um, and, and be much more agile. Um, so the, the, the listening part is, is being key, I think, but, but recognizing that I think as already mentioned that we need to look after the, the, the collective. We, we can't we can't just be individuals. That actually uh, there is benefit from coming together. That certainly for from a less experienced team members that they, they thrive a lot on just being involved in conversations and overhearing what's going on in the office environment and and learning. Uh, on, on, on things that aren't formal um, and uh, certainly when we're bidding for work or where we're collaborating on, on uh, kind of workshops there yes it's worked over the last kind of two years but but there is a sense that you do get more out of those sessions when you're actually able to physically interact um, and, and make that work so uh, we, we, we're trying to balance that I think and, and trying to get just that but also recognizing that some of the, the physical constraints will probably will be with us for some time. So social distancing and mask wearing and the like may or may not disappear, but I think people are still gonna be very conscious of that. Um, and we need to bear that in mind. And that has an impact in terms of office space and, and ways of working in terms of size and uh, the infrastructure that, that goes with that. So um, yeah, there's a lot of consideration going on and I, and I, I sense we're gonna feel our way through this. I'm not sure anyone's gonna know the right answer or, or know it's the right thing to do until it's been trialed um, and we get more feedback from colleagues and, and also from clients that we work with. Um, and, and I know again, some of the clients that, that you mentioned in my introduction there was that they're thinking hard also about their, their ways of working with their staff and what they need for their project teams um, and how do they capitalize on the savings, but also get a way of working. And particularly when you're 
paying for third party, how do they get reassured that they get the productivity that they were pre-pandemic and, and still getting the quality of service that they expect? And uh, particularly for an organisation like ours, that they're getting peer reviews done and, and things are checked and balanced properly uh, before the outputs are, are kind of delivered. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. And I, I say, I sense we're going to feel our way through this. I don't think anyone's going to be confident enough to know they've got the right answer. Uh, they might they might say they do, but I, I sense we're going to come out with ways of working and it's going to tweak and adjust as, as we go through the months and probably into into the years or how we fine tune this to, to really adapt to that. Oh, I think you're absolutely right, um, Mark. And I think also that that sort of feeling your way would be interesting, especially where you're working with multiple clients that, um, you know, how how those individual organisations will, you know, come up with, you know, maybe innovative ways of, of, of you know, sort of tackling that challenge. And of course, it, we're still very much working in a very changing environment. Um, and, and, and sort of maybe thinking about that, Collins, uh, you know, from your perspective, how would, you know, have you have you seen sort of, sort of either different things or, or innovative ways that people are, are tackling some of these uh, challenges? So, I mean, you know, Mark, I think covered it superbly, right? I mean, uh, no, no one size fits all, right? I mean, I think you've got to kind of uh, work your way through this. Uh, but I think some things that, you know, uh, are common, I would say, and, and you know, Mark and Jason talked about the, the flexibility and, uh, and I, I'd call it radical flexibility, right? I mean, uh, while, you know, you need to give the flexibility of a mom to kind of take care of her kids and still work and, you know, but you still need to find that, you know, Mark touched upon it, you know, when do we do the things as a collective? So I think those are things that as leaders, you know, the, uh, while again, technology is an afterthought, you know, how do we enable all of that, right? So that I think is a key area to focus on for all of us. And then, uh, you know, people, right? So how do we kind of uh, make them adaptable to this whole hybrid thing, right? So while our initial poll had said, yeah, everybody wants to go hybrid, but uh, you know, how do we do that, right? How do we bring people to the office at, at what, you know, um, kind of uh, intervals and, you know, what's the space going to look like? Because, you know, I was talking to somebody and they said, hey, we, we, we've done away with one office and we're remodeling another office, right? To give open spaces. And so there's, there's lots of things that are happening in, in this space. But again, at the end, uh, it boils down to uh, hyper-personalization, right? Not only for your for your consumer, but also yourself, right? I think Mark touched upon, you know, his people and saying that, you know, we need to listen and how do we kind of personalize the service and the enablement that I do for each person? I think that's that's really important. Well, I think you're mute. I am sorry about that. Um, yeah, so cut, cut, cutting in on that, I think also we have a, Question, just before I go to Jason, and maybe Jason, you maybe have a view on this, but um, one, one of our um, attendees today has just sort of raised a question, even if you're an organization that's not actually looking to build a hybrid model, um, are, the, are the sort of digital technologies that are being developed and, you know, sort of being sort of enhanced as part of, you know, the, the, the other drive, I suppose, for this, are they going to be of value to, to those sorts of organizations that maybe not, can't actually, you know, sort of implement hybrid model for a number of reasons? Absolutely. Um, if, you, if we take Teams as the example, because it had the overwhelming majority there, it's just as useful in the office as it is out the office. It's not Teams that makes us able to work from home. It's Teams that makes us agile so we can change our policies quickly because it's got the feature set there to allow us to. So the vast majority of products or, or um, vendors or, or whatever it is you're choosing to work with should always be with how does it fit you in mind, but also how quickly can you adapt in the future? So for us, we were, or we believed we were always going to be a workforce in the office model. Um, very similar to what Mark was saying, we're an organization based around people and we gained a level of tribal awareness um, and overhearing phone calls, et cetera, which was very difficult to replace and create an efficiency like no other in, in the industry. What this done is, is shock, shook us up, if you like, and we realized we could change if we wanted to. Even right now, if you think you cannot possibly, your model cannot change, there will always be a person or a department within the organization as you scale that will be able to benefit from this at some point. And do you have the right product set to adjust and be agile when that comes? And just to, um, Paul, just on that, to take it back, if we go back two years, 
in the news, in the media, all we were hearing was, hey, maybe we're going to do a four day week. Maybe we're going to move to this Sweden model where we work longer hours for four days and then we have a three day weekend. Whether we like it or not, as business leaders, business owners, whatever positions we sit in, the the world is shifting towards a more home life balance. And so it's not about what you might be doing or, or need right now. It's about also preparing for making that shift if you need to. And to, to link that into a direct example, for us, we're scaling incredibly quickly at the moment. And we also believed we were going to be an office only organization to some degree. Now, our strategy wise, we've had to shift and we've had to move to a remote model so that we can increase talent that we can we can effectively reach out to and bring on board. And so having the tool set we had at the time meant we could do that almost overnight and we could suddenly become a remote workforce if we needed to. So even if um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the name of the person that asked, um, but even if you feel right now you're never going to be or, or hybrid is never going to be an option. The tooling that you can use is that's best of breed is still there and relevant for you in the office. It just means that when you do or, or maybe scale or maybe your business changes slightly under some industry circumstances, you've got the agility and option to shift if you so wish. Absolutely. And I think that's a very valid point, Jason, and, and, and very well made um, point as well. I think, as you say, everybody will have their reasons. And uh, as you say, there'll be good reasons for how um, you, you want to conduct your business. If, if, if technology can help with that agility and those options, it's, you know, that's got to be a benefit, I suppose, going forward. So, you know, that's something that we do need to sort of uh, keep an eye on, I would suggest. I'm just going to come back to Collins very quickly. I'm conscious, as I say, we approach your 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 deadline, and I appreciate your time that you spent with us, Collins. But is there anything else, just finally, you would want to sort of just comment on in respect of that, um, and sort of, you know, sort of before you go? I I, I think we we just got to be agile, right, and and you know, fail fast and. Yeah, smell the roses as we go along, right? And and pick those successes. I think that's important. Uh, uh, and then move forward because it's, it's it's been changing across, and I don't see it, you know, changing in you know going back to normal or something like that. So we just have to be really aware and be agile uh, to to make those changes. I think that's that's my last comment. Thank you, folks. Well, thank you very much indeed for that, Collins. And we did say thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we'll, I'll leave you to sort of leave when you need to, um, but um, thank you. And I'm, what I'm going to do is just, we're going to bring up one more poll uh, just before uh, another question. Uh, and this poll is really about looking ahead um, at the sort of technology that we might be using um, going forward. And I know that, um, you know, people and organizations are looking at this as a way of helping with that flexibility, the use of virtual desktop infrastructure. So if I could just give you a few seconds to sort of give us your, your, um, your responses to this, um, it will help us um, sort of shape what the next question will be. This certainly seems to be a, an interesting topic, especially the development of it. I think it's something that we're, we're right in the middle of. We were maybe, you know, thinking about it a year ago, trialing things, using what we had. We've had a year of experience now. You know, there's a lot of different views and different opinions out there. Um, and I'm sure that will continue to change as technology and the way people use technology will, will, will sort of work. But um, let's see what we've got on the, on, the, on the use of virtual desktop infrastructure. So, yeah, so we've actually got quite an even mix there. We've got 25% of you actually using it at the moment. Another 38, nearly 40% sort of considering it. So you could look at that as being, you know, the majority of people at least being aware of it or having a, um, a, a thought of planning to use it. Um, and then the remaining 40% sort of at the moment saying that we don't use virtual infrastructure at all, virtual desktop infrastructure. So um, going forward on that sort of thing, I thought it would be useful just to get a, a view from the panel on, you know, if, if you are still thinking about um, what you should do, you know, sort of the, the, the hybrid working, the, the remote working, you know, in, in a lot of cases and a lot of organizations that are still very much, you know, 
in the in the lockdown work work from home mode if you're still thinking about what you should do and what and, and how we should sort of plan a return to work in a less restrict in the less restricting times ahead um, what would you say would be the key priorities for organizations to be thinking about and maybe if i can stay with jason on screen and just sort of see what your views on that are sure <coughs> oh sorry um it's funny the something I like to do as a as a leader, if, if that's what I refer to myself as, is is I like to step back and put myself in the person's shoes that I'm going to be ho hopefully making the right decision for. And so midway through the pandemic, the lockdown, um, I asked, I, you know, I was asking myself, what am I struggling with? Because if I'm struggling with it, there's a good chance the other uh, engineers and, and um, all the employees are going to be struggling with it too and managed to create a bit of a list all of the SLT, uh, SLT did we brought it together and um, obviously made some decisions and outcomes the the primary focus for us as an organization has been bridging the gap between the leadership team and the employee um, and the main reason being is if we look at this from from a, a member of staff size they have so much opportunity out there in the world right now. Um, there's possibly more job vacancies that they could apply for than ever before because there's so many remote working ones. Um, the technology industry is booming um, because we're more in need than, than possibly ever before. So the, the immediate focus for us was bridging the gap between our leadership team and our, our, our staff, if you like. And that meant or, you know, unfortunately taking it away from HR and uh, actively speaking to people, having the surveys, finding out what they enjoy, what they would like to see. And then we've had to um, put a lot of time and effort and, and transparent, transparently money as well into creating some sort of model that fits everyone, but not everyone. Before, it was very easy for a business to say, here's our office, you either come to the office or you don't, etc. Now our policy is becoming a, hey if you're in this department you can do this if you're in this department you could do this if you work if you live outside this area this is what you can do and it's happened to become so much more granular that it's slightly more difficult to manage but so be it and now so we've got the the shifting the the focus we're trying to get more more connected with the the people of the organization to get their views etc um so they enjoy where they work and and we're keeping up with the requirements they have and then secondly is optimizing i will happily share because i'm sure there's people in the audience that feel this way we are a more inefficient organization right now than we ever have been when we we're in the office and we are having to monitor that find ways to improve it i have so many meetings every day that are possibly needless that that i could address in other ways via a chat or something similar and so there is the there is the constant monitoring of people and making sure they're happy and then the second element is are we being optimal because right now we've embraced this new way of working we've adopted it everyone's adopted it but we're not getting the same output from us as a team because for of whatever reason the technology we're using the way in which we're interacting um so i would definitely say the two things for us are as i said bridging the gap and staying in the know with the people in the organization and then secondly um what i would consider land and expand which is don't just pull it in and leave it. We've now got to optimize this tooling because uh, like we did with our on-premise stuff, now we've got to optimize all the stuff that we're using remotely. Sure. And interestingly, uh, we have another question from the audience actually uh, on, a, on a sort of topic that is very akin to that in terms of, you know, organizations that have already got a number of project products in for their, you know, for, for, for how they work, may have been in for a little while before this pandemic. And now here we are, we're talking about, you know, sort of having integrated suites of, you know, collaborated collaboration tools, you know, and, and obviously that's a big question as to, well, you know, do I, do I need all that? Do I, do I need to have the whole of the Microsoft suite just so that I can have teams and things like that? Now, I'm not, I'm not a, a Microsoft expert, you know, in terms of what and how they, they license their products, but, you know, I'm assuming that, um, you know, there is an element of, you um, you know, sort of selection that, that organizations can can make around the level of, of uh, a number of products that they can take from a, from a vendor and, and obviously hopefully integrate that to it. Would, 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 you, would you agree with that or is there other things that we should, we should be looking at? Uh, so, so thankfully, uh, 
I've done. I've been working with Microsoft for ten years, and uh, I know their their strategy and, and game plan a little better than than most. Microsoft and Apple do an incredible job of um, what I call making us giving us something we don't realize we need. So as an example, face ID on an iPhone, I never realized I needed that. Now I've got it. I wouldn't do without it. It's, it's made my life easier. It's, it's become normal. What Microsoft done so incredibly with teams. And um, I think they unfortunately hit the nail on the head with this teams is in every three, six, five license you get free of charge. So you buy a license, get teams. And as part of it, you get three or four other products at a minimum included and so what's happened is organizations have gone right well i want team so i'm going to buy some licensing and then suddenly i've got these three other products that i get for free as part of the licensing i may as well use them and so what microsoft are seeing is a, a huge uptake and now it's just a slow gradual upsell where people are just using more and more and then as they get to the end of that four products they realize the fourth product bolts into a product in the next tier and they think about going up a tier. So what they've done incredibly well is, is uh, tease people in or entice people in with teams, if you like. And then with the other products you get, entice you in to use more and more of the stack. The truth is, unfortunately, that um, Microsoft are the global powerhouse when it comes to tech. I'm, I'm sure we all know that. And when it comes to remote workforce, they have plowed a huge amount of time, effort in both development, security, and lots of other things. So whilst some people would like to go the Google route, they'd like to go the Teams route the, uh, or the 365 route, typically you do want to align to, to one or the other um, when it comes to aligning your business because ultimately they are best of breed and bolt into everything. When you've got, we've got a CRM platform, for example, we use HubSpot, uh, if anyone's familiar with it. HubSpot yeah. directly bolts into 365. It is all done in a next, next, next wizard with relative ease. It's been tried and tested on thousands of organizations, and it meant that we can now share our data. We don't have to uh, have double data and so on. So whilst, unfortunately, you don't need all of the products, you're going to need at least a baseline typically on most uh, on either Google or 365 to create your baseline that you then plug all of your other bits into. Sure. So what I'm hearing there, just for the... Um, purpose of that that question then is that Microsoft especially sound like they they, they do a good job at making you think you need all this stuff. I mean they they're, they're giving it to you and everything else. But the reality is that I know I mean Teams. You know if you just wanted to use Teams, there is a there is a mechanism for buying a very basic license that will give you Teams. You may not necessarily have all the integration to all the other you know wonderful stuff that um, you know they might they might provide, but it does give you at least a route in to, to use, you know, what is seen as, um, you know, leading technology. Um, the other thing that sort of um, I picked up from your, your response there, Jason, is that Apple did a good job at doing Face ID, but they didn't know that we were all going to be wearing masks when we wanted to use the Face ID. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's the next thing. <laughs> um, Mark, what about from your perspective uh, with, uh, you know, organisations looking to, you know, to, to do something about hybrid working? What, what would you say was their, their key priorities? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I support what Jason said. I think uh, that there's a lot of opportunity there that, that we're still trying to grapple with. And the, the two key considerations for me, really, that we're, we're working with is, is welfare and productivity. That They're kind of the two things that we need to, to look after. So, um welfare for people that are returning to, to, to an office environment be it client site or, or our own um, or whether they're they're at home and how do we get that interface right um, I think also is picking up on Jason's point around kind of the productivity that a lot of meetings are taking place and that's been part of the comfort blanket for people either that they have some interface with people therefore they set up a meeting or you've got clients that want to make sure that things are happening and therefore they sit in meetings that they wouldn't normally sit in on um, or we have several meetings with different groups of people that actually you would do in a different way if you were actually in the office environment. So uh, we, we need to get more mature around that. And I think the, the meeting culture is going to be quite hard to break out of um, where, where that's kind of generated from. Um, but but there's, there's a real opportunity to, to, to try and do that better um, and look after that, that kind of welfare perspective. And, uh, and everyone's different. I think we all, and we've probably all experienced our own highs and lows over, over the last kind of 18 months. And, um, 
there's no necessary rhyme or reason to that. And I think, again, we need to look out for folk um, at, at all the time in terms of where they might be might be struggling for, for whatever reason, be it, be it situations at home or situations at work. Um, and that's difficult to pick up on when you've only got a kind of a, a screen to look at on. And, and uh, I think our, our tactics as managers have had to change to really drill into human behaviour to really get under the skin of how people are uh, and, and go about that in different ways. Um, but then the, the productivity piece is, is really interesting, I think, in terms of how do we get that balance between, as I say, meeting cultures versus actually time to, to, to be productive. Um, and somehow people need to fit in some time to commute again. Um, so that, that commute time has either been spent with family or exercise or, or hobbies, uh, or it's been spent working. Uh, and I know in, in our environment, a lot, a lot of people now are, are working longer hours, um, but they're more flexible. So yes, they might, they might have a, a break in the morning or the afternoon to go and do something or pick up the kids or, or do something they wouldn't have done previously, but, but probably the working hours per day has probably increased. Um, and then if we're expecting people to put in a commute time on top of that, what gives and how do we balance that workload against uh, amongst the teams? So I think it's a really important efficiency questions or productivity questions that we need to kind of uh, grapple with. Um, and, and it's, it's yeah, that, there's no easy answer as I can see at the moment that uh, in some ways th this hybrid model is going to really emphasize some of those previous issues in a much amplified way um, in terms of hours of work and productivity. Yeah, sure, sure. And I, I, I think we've, yeah, we, we, we've covered some of that and I think you're absolutely right, Mark, on that. At, that, at this point, maybe I should, um, I should ask um, the Simplex guys on the call, just bring up a slide because Simplex were, have got an um, initiative going at the moment to sort of be able to book in um, some time uh, to actually sort of look at some of the challenges that you might have. And uh, I know that there is a, um, a QR code and a, and a website sort of link to actually um, sort of do this. So if, if, if you are considering, um, you know, still considering or want to sort of talk, uh, you know, for, uh, to, to some, some, some experts on, on, you know, your options and, and things like that, this is, this is certainly an opportunity for a 30 minute sort of technology call. Um, just use the, the QR code to scan the, uh, the, the site and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, the, the details for that form will be, will be on, the, on the Simplex website. So um, we're trying to sort of help people just to sort of at least give them the opportunity to talk to someone and sort of see what the opportunities are for what, what your business needs and what you, what you could be doing. Um, and also sort of moving on, I think we have a couple more, um, we've got a couple more poll questions. We've also got a couple more questions um, that have come through. Um, and if I just, uh, I just ask one of those, just to see if we uh, get a response uh, from the team here. So how does this new way of working, you know, how is it managed from a user experience perspective? And people might not have a uniform experience if not working from a standard setting. So I think Jason, um, and Mark, actually, you both talked about this in terms of, you know, the challenges to, to your, you know, your, your working policies, your standards, and, and how do people, um, how do people working from home, you know, how, what's their end user experience to, um, uh, you know, what's, what, what working from, you know, hybrid working would be? Would you have any, any thoughts on that to sort of add to that, Jason? Absolutely. Um, for... It depends on the type of organization you are, um, but for a lot of the organizations where um, maybe the staff's IT literacy is less than, than a tech organization, for example, or um, maybe a lawyer or an accountant where they, they use tech all day in the construction industries, etc., cetera, um, we've seen that user experience has actually been rather complex and, and rather labored for some. Um, they've, they've had to adapt to a way of working, but to be, to be truthful, they never fully adapted or embraced the way it was in the office because it wasn't the, the sole part of their their role. What we are seeing almost um, daily at the moment is, is simplification. We're seeing so many organizations that have 14, 15, sometimes even more products. And they're saying, how do we make this easier? If there must be a better way to have all of our products talking together or have one password or um, a way of making that productivity and user experience far simpler. So there are obviously companies like Okta, if anyone's familiar with them and, um, and JumpCloud, et cetera. What has really happened 
is IT departments, IT organizations have looked at their, what we call product stack. And that's everything that happens or works on their network. And they've gone, crap, we've got, we've got a lot of technology. We've got a lot of things that we need to bolt into this end way of working. And transparently, it's confusing for end users. They've got one way of accessing this application or they can access three that way but they access this fourth one in a different way and so we're seeing there's a a, a real uh, element of stress and, and mental pressure on end users when they're at home um, because they don't have that person just next to them that they can call or or shout over to hey i'm stuck so they've lost what we call uh, internally tribal awareness so there is a massive shift now and i'm sure it's something mark has been doing a lot of over the last couple of years of trying to simplify operations and trying to make product a and product b talk or you know your 14 products talk so that end users access these things use these things with the same credentials or same details and therefore making their life far simpler working from home Excellent. Okay. And Mark, have you, have, have you got anything else to add to that? Uh... Yeah, I, I, think, I think what we've seen is, is amongst colleagues is there is a mindset change where they are much more open to trying things or adapting to new things, uh, which is really positive. And I think, I think that Good. provides an opportunity. Um, and they've been willing to do that, obviously, because it's, it's been, we've all been in a huge amount of change and um, trying to adjust and, and find a way of working that works for us individually. So I think the introduction of of uh, what, what's gone on over the last couple of years has, has been really powerful from that point of view. And I think if we can harness that in the right way and explore that curiosity or openness to, to new things, I, th I think that that will benefit us all. Um, and, and granted, everyone's different and, and there will be certain people that, that won't adapt and can't change or, 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 or don't see the benefit in doing so. But I would say on the vast majority, people have kind of seen the benefit of doing something different and uh, are much more open to that exploration now. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I I think we'll see some of those more niche or smaller products come into the marketplace and be adopted. And, and, and I know that certainly with around communication, trying to move away from the weekly kind of email updates, that people will be much more creative around how they do that um, and use different forums or, or, or ways of communicating that isn't just a Friday afternoon email about the current week or next week coming. Absolutely. As you say, I think that that certainly is a good example of how things have changed. And I, I also wonder, um, again, sort of prompted from a question that we've just, just put in there. Do, do you think this, um, you know, this different, the, the way that we change and adapt to the way we work, do, do, can you see um, any new roles being created as a result of hybrid working? You know, the traditional roles we've got, maybe we, you know, this is the opportunity to have a completely different, you know, sort of set of jobs and profiles of work that we do. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure there is, and I, I, to be honest, I've not really thought about that, but I, I think it's a good, really good question and one we should think about. And I think for us as an organisation, certainly knowledge management is, is one that we need to grapple with really well in terms of this remote working and how we, we give people access to knowledge in a much smarter way, particularly when those office conversations aren't taking place and that person isn't just at the end of the corridor to go and speak to. Um, but you go and look in the calendar and they're booked up for the next three weeks on Teams meetings. So how do you get hold of that person and how do you interface? So I think knowledge management is a key bit of that. But, but I think also there's it, it, probably something we need to do around welfare around that. And we can't automate that clearly. But I think getting the, 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 the flash kind of feeling of people and where they are and how we respond to that better. And uh, that, that creativity needs to be much more kind of agile, I suspect. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you got any thoughts on that, Jason? New new roles that we might be able to might see in the future as a result of uh, these these sorts of changes? Um, we haven't transparently seen any new roles. We've just seen additions or multiplications on existing roles. So, um, tech obviously there's more demand and more roles out there than ever before um, because demands are are going up. But then specifically with a lot of the accountancy or, or lawyer firms etc that that we work with um their their business model is changing slightly and they're they're hiring remote staff in cheaper cheaper area of the country and then doing two of them so for example a london-based lawyers we look after they're about 400 people um they've actually decided rather than taking one in london now let's take two in somewhere up north where the salary expectations might be a little lower and so what we're seeing is actually people just trying to get more value for their their money so um, it's meant there are more jobs to feel like that but 
in some of the more remote areas where um, the Sally expectations and the home life uh, scenario is a little better. Yes, yeah, I can understand that. Certainly in different parts of the country and, you know, that we're seeing shifts in, in, in other aspects such as, you know, house prices are changing in different parts of the country as people's working practice changes. So that certainly supports that. And then, and then finally, on, a, on another question I had uh, sort of posted here is that, do, we, do you think um, that a hybrid working model changes much between an organisation that is just dealing with you know, traditional, I suppose, a traditional office environment where we're now working remotely to maybe an organisation that had a lot more focus on, on frontline staff that, uh, you know, had been always been out on the road, if you like, or, you know, sort of utilities might be, you know, sort of an example where, um, you know, the, 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 the business model and the working model, will, will that change? You know, would, would frontline workers, you know, whether they be in hospitals or, you know, sort of supporting, you know, say utility type organisations needing to be out there, you know, how are they going to, are they going to benefit from this? You know, they're going to see their their office colleagues sort of working from home, you know, sort of going to the gym in the morning and, you know, but doing their hours. Are they going to be able to do the same? So it's interesting to, to flip that back to what Mark said about people being willing to try new things. Me in, in my own personal life, I had a boiler problem. I contacted the boiler company. Their procedure was video call you show us around the boiler, we'll ask you to look at certain parts, etc. We'll work out what parts we need and then we'll send the chap out to uh, to fit those parts. And that is a real representation of what we're seeing with any frontline organisations is the main reason that they typically went out before was 50% because they had to and 50% because that's how their particular customer wanted to engage with them. So even when it comes to you know business to business, a lot of the relationships I've created over the years have been over uh, a restaurant table or on the golf course or, or one of these types of things. Most people now expect or are fully accepting of let's just jump on a video call. Even the people that were slightly more hesitant and, and sort of done all their business face to face. And to put that into a real world example, again, um, we look after a, a very large construction firm across the UK. They always told me, the only way we get construction jobs is by meeting people, taking them out for lunch, going on golf courses, etc. They've realized they don't need to do that. And actually people were with them because of them, not necessarily what they done with them and, and what they took them out for. So it's, I think it's really opened people's eyes into, is there a necessity for a, a physical interaction? And the answer now, unfortunately, is not anymore because the technology is there to support us. As, as a, a, a tech company, we have um, on all of our support tools on the phone now, the ability to video call a customer when they put a ticket in, to look at a particular physical issue they may have, advise and then dispatch someone if need to. So in answer to your questions, bring it back around. I think the front line is always gonna be there because there's always something you have to do with your hands. But all the steps leading up to actually doing it or having to do it are being removed or, or unfortunately uh, made redundant somewhat by the need because of technology that has come out to uh, to allow it. Yeah, interesting, interesting perspective, as you say, Jason. And uh, quite true. Mark, have you got any other comments on that? Yeah, I, I mean, that, that, that tension's always been there, hasn't it, unfortunately, between kind of frontline workers out in the field versus the, the, the lucky ones in the office, so to speak. So I, I think I think this is maybe going to amplify that. But but I do I do think large organisations that, that had workforces out, out in the field were already starting to, to look at that and how they can bring agility and flexibility into those workers as well. So uh, be it shift patterns or or uh, ease of, of switching with colleagues and uh, allowing people to kind of break up shifts to go and see the school play with their kid in it or whatever i think i think that expectation was already there and i, I guess this will accelerate that to some extent that um businesses with 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 a large numbers of operational team will, will need to look at that workforce and make sure there's not a two-tier system and preferences for people that were perceived to be the blue collar workers and, and and those that aren't so i think i think that's really important but as jason was saying i think companies and organizations have, have moved very quickly to look at how they can reduce that frontline interface and, and do things smarter and, and better and be it with with processes in, in water treatment plants or, or be it kind of leak detection or or say servicing household goods that that there's this the, the the it has a real part to play in that now and um 
diagnostically certainly try to work remotely before then you, you determine what interventions are needed and, and how you actually physically then go and do work um, which hopefully will, will make us more efficient and, and then enable people to to be more agile and flexible about how they do that and I, I think also the who's best place to, to, to go to that location and do that I think we've got better at uh, that agility again between workforces and, and deployment of, of staff um, but I recognise that in certain clients like a, an airport baggage screening team that's not possible that you're always going to need a frontline presence and and how you manage that is, is going to be a challenge but I think that's always been there but I think companies are getting better at how they they engage with that and and, and the unions as well I think they obviously have a place to play a part to play in that but I think the acceptance now of flexibility is, is here to stay. Absolutely, Mark. I think it's a very valid point. And to be fair, you know, some you know there are a lot of people that um, you know want and suit to have those sorts of frontline roles. You know, and they they want to they want to have an outdoor job or you know everything yep. else. It's absolutely, you know, there's always that 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 need. Yep. It's quite interesting for the for the IT departments uh, out there. You know, I'm sure you know they've seen a, a change in the fact that. You know the home environment has now sort of almost you know extended their their sort of boundary of where the IT department need to be. You know, if the, mm. if, uh, you know we've all got broadband, which is you know essentially probably private broadband. But if it goes down while we're trying to do a Teams meeting, it's a it's an IT problem again, and uh, you know we have to we have to sort of uh, try and sort of work with that or sort of keep that up and running so there'll be more probably probably more pressure on you know support for people in that respect and, and there's some questions there about how organizations do that because obviously you're then into you know you're actually crossing over the boundary into people's sort of personal environments we're, we're coming up to the last five minutes and i'm conscious and i always do try and make sure that we finish you know on or before time i know people on the call are probably also very busy and have sort of calls at one o'clock so i want to make sure that um you know everyone on the call has the opportunity to know that they've sort of they've had the chance to listen to, to the to the conversation as a whole so um what i wanted to do i think we have one last poll um just sort of to sort of uh throw up on the screen for people um as a, as a final sort of uh, sort of summary of, of today's sort of discussion and um, you know, if we could just do that before you you, you sort of shoot off, and I'll, I'll obviously do the, the sort of summary of that just after this. And and while while we're just letting you sort of um, make those those decisions, you know, again, a, a big thanks to to Mark and Jason and Collins um, for your time today, coming on the call um, and having having the sort of the, the conversation with me under the spotlight. Hopefully, people have. Um, you know, listened and have found you know what we've what we've talked about to be um, you know sort of helpful, informative, and useful. And again, if there are you know if there are things that people want to talk about, um, or or sort of get the opportunity for a little bit more um, sort of feedback on what uh, what we've talked about, I'm sure you know again Simplex are, are there. You can reach out, and they will they will definitely uh, will we'll help you. Um, the, the the sort of uh, the polls come back here. What was the key motivation motivation for hybrid work models? You know, there again, it's quite split, which is good. Um, you know, productivity is is featuring, and again, I suppose when you think if you're an organisation where you're locked down and you, you, your employees can't go in the office, then clearly productivity is a key thing to keep you know to keep going. Um, I think Jason has sort of mentioned that maybe now that you know we, the, the hybrid and remote working is a, is a way of life we might not think we're as productive as we were when we were in the office but keeping productivity is very important um, cost savings are there um, you know sort of and also the ability to sort of you know sort of have a more distributed workforce um, and I think Aren, again safety amidst the pandemic is an, is an excellent sort of um, you know and again a, a response there that gets its its fair share which is a obviously again a very important aspect that we've had to uh, manage over this time so thank you very much indeed for your for your um, contributions to those polls and um, also thank you to everyone who's put questions uh, certainly on the question and answer sheet um, that 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 forum that that's still open um, and again if you have any other questions you want to raise um, you can contact um, contact us at simplex uh, we will answer all questions that we get um, you know whether it be through this forum or through email or anything else so we do we do appreciate that as well and finally just a reminder that um, 
of the of the of the uh, the QR code and website for if you if you do want to reach out to Simplex, we can we can set up a thirty minute um, call just to sort of talk through some of some of the challenges that you might have. So um, yeah, thank you once again, um, and I do appreciate your time. It's been a, an excellent hour. Thank you again to Mark and Jason and to, to Collins, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.